Hi there, listener. You're about to experience Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and there will be plenty of game talk, but also copious amounts of crude, off-color, offensive, and immature speech. So if you are of a rather sensitive humor constitution, we're just letting you know what you're in for with this show. It has games. It has jokes. You know, just games and jokes. Take the games, take the jokes, and have a good time. Hello, Internet. Welcome to another Tadpog podcast. It's a show that happens twice a week for two old guys. Two old guys that are old friends doing this old thing for a long time. Yeah, and for a long time to come. Yep. For, for yeah. the, until either one of us probably die. Yeah. Yeah. We drew up a contract. Well, I drew one up for you. You drew up one for me. <laughs> we signed it. We're locked in. <laughs> in other words, we got married. Yeah. We exchanged vows. Yeah. We call it a friend pact, but yeah, we did get married. A podcaster pact. <laughs> That's why our parents were like, we're against gay marriage. Like, we'll call it friendship pact then, but it's the exact same thing. Thumbs up. <laughs> That's easy to get in a Kentucky courthouse. A, fri- <laughs> a, a friendship pact form. No wor- no problems there. It's a Jesus handshake. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You guys could Jesus handshake all day long. Sign me up. Well, this week, uh, we're, we've been on a, a, a tear of... Pretty bad games. We have for a while, yeah. And I think Dave, you were kind of you were kind of fed up with it. I was. I needed just a breath. I just needed to resurface and and breathe the clean air. With the rest of the Super Nintendo library, we don't really know what's gonna be any good. We've already played the one hundred (laughs) best. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) So I mean, I'm still eager to do uh, like Smart Ball. See if that's as fun as I remember it as a kid. Smart ball? Uh huh. What is that? That was a Super Nintendo game where you are like a prince who is turned into this viscous smart blob. ball. Smart ball. <laughs> it's a stupid name for what it is. It's told sort of like a comic book or or a um, a film reel where you're this viscous ball, sentient viscous ball that can absorb other balls into itself and is trying to go save uh, the princess or save your wife or something like that. Okay. I fucking loved it as a kid. Okay. I want I want to see sometime if it holds up. Is it a long game? I don't remember. I never beat it. What is it a platformer? Yep. All right. Well, we should do that sometime soon. Sometime. I'm down. I'm down for Smart Ball, a game I've never heard of. <laughs> so, but so we're trying to think of okay, what's something we know is going to be pretty good. What can we do to step on the toes of Two Dudes in a Nest podcast? <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's a, that's Let's see. What have they done? Let's do that too. Right. <laughs> It's fun. We gave them like we gave them a good eight month lead on it. Yeah, it's cool. So look through the Steam library. Oh, Ducktales remastered. Okay, we've we've mentioned doing that a long time ago. Clever. It's nice. Cover so, our tracks. Yeah, and we we did. I remember I bought it for <laughs> it was eight dollars when I bought it. That's how long ago it was. Like we we'll do that for the show. <laughs> I don't even when you said when you mentioned it, I was like, oh yeah, I own that. I do not remember buying it. I don't know if someone <laughs> bought it for me. I don't know if I bought it, how much it was. All these questions are, are very important <laughs> to me. So that's all we're going to be talking about. I guess DuckTales Remastered and the original DuckTales for the NES. That sounds good. I like it. I'm on board. But before that, I'm your bearded host, Tyler. And today's drink from Nicole's Christmas gift. We skipped it last time. So so excited to have Phil talk about Garfield, we forgot about it. He's he's so, he's so anti-alcohol that we decided to honor his wishes <laughs> and is. not drink on his episode. Cuz I'm pr- I'm pretty sure Oregon doesn't allow alcohol. That's why he lives they there. They don't. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like it's just like they have a pipeline going from Canada to Oregon for maple syrup, but that's that's like it. Yeah. And pot. I think they can do pot. pot Anything yeah. that's natural. Yeah. And oil. And oil. <laughs> <laughs> and pot oil. So what I have you have here, yeah, is the the margarita out of the box, and does not look good. I don't like margaritas that much. See, I I like margaritas a lot if it's a good margarita. Well, sure. I hate uh, sour mix and cheap tequila. I, that's gross to me. This might okay. Is there cheap tequila in here? Uh, it's actually middle shelf tequila. Okay, this it might legitimately make me throw up. 
Okay. But not even joking. <laughs> so if I throw up, just do like the next 10 minutes of the show by yourself. Are you if, cool? if you made it through Josh, Josh Ed, Time Lord Josh Edwards' box without throwing up, yeah, but that was, was just dry heaving. But there was no tequila in that box. Okay. Yeah. So there's that. So send this a, te- a, te- a tequila sampler. Oh, Everybody, man. please. Please, God, no. <laughs> I refuse. I wonder if you could actually send. I know there's a thing about shipping alcohol over state lines, and it's that's why Amazon Wine has been like yeah. held up forever. So I think you can do it. I don't think you're supposed to, but I think you can do it. Anybody want to break the law for us? Anybody <laughs> want to? Anybody willing to break the law or to make Dave sick? Please don't do that. <laughs> please, please, please don't do that. So if you don't want to try it, I understand. It's cool. No, no, no. I'll try it. Or if you want to mix some monster in there. Yeah, I, that would make it better, <laughs> right? <laughs> so here is uh, the Christmas gift tequila. Christmas or, gift tequila. Christmas gift. Because it was... I'm sorry, was... margarita. Yeah. No. Oh, God. I don't even know. I'm going to take a little sip. This smells bad. Um, That's not awful, awful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I tried it. I tried it, though. Mm-hmm. You tried it. I like the sourness, mm-hmm. but man, that tequila, I can taste the tequila. Did you get really sick off that one time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's my. Uh, that's part of my virginity story. Oh, okay. If you recall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I um, drank a lot of tequila and threw up all over her room. Mm. All yeah. Over, all yeah. over. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I threw up so much that her sweet mate uh, knocked on the bathroom door uh, when I was dumping my guts out <laughs> in the in the uh, toilet, the shared toilet. And she was very concerned that I was going to die in her bathroom. <laughs> so it's like that scene from Pulp Fiction where Uma Thurman is dying uh, in the drug dealer's living room. It's exactly what it was like. This might surprise you, Dave. What's that? I've never seen Pulp Fiction. Have you played the Super Nintendo game? I'm, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I wish. But my other uh, other intro was I listened to um, Hops and Heroes today, and they they a took show. a request that I made directly. So Drew told his virginity story. Yep. And then they talked about now uh, playing and doing Earthbound, which makes me very happy. Yeah, they're gonna do Earthbound. But while uh, Drew was telling his abbreviated virginity story. Mm-hmm. Because I need Bailey was one hundred percent right. I need more pervy details. Yeah, more very pervy details. Yeah, she but, knows you. She gets you. She, does, she understands she you on a very very base level. We've like. met once, and she gets me. Well, I think it was when you just mentioned her boobs, <laughs> boobs on the show, yeah. just like that. That made Jacob cringe so hard when I did that. I know he messaged me about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I know when it's something's really like made Jacob cringe. It's like I never hear from Jacob about the show, <laughs> like ever. Get him under control. <laughs> yeah, but that made me uh, think about sort of the uh, there was something about his story that made me think about. Oh, he said it was at a youth, it was at a youth gathering at someone's house, right? And he had to go out in the woods to do it. That made me. Uh, think about something that I did. It's not really the first time that I did it, but it's the first time I really did it. Did what? F- the- finger blast a girl. Because oh. of course I talked about the church. It's the church nursery, but colloquially church basement. had bog church basement. Yeah, but that was more like all right. The first time I did that, I did it there, and then I did it the next time was years later at Brandon of Axley's at his house. That was your blasting hut. That yeah, is the blast hut, right? And but both of those were more akin to like playing pinball. Because I talked to Chris Edler today about scheduling, so that's why that's why I meant that metaphor. The way you just sort of tap the sides when you're playing pinball, yeah. Like if the button for the bumper, yeah, was a vagina. That's that's more or less what I was doing over there. Okay, like it wasn't really like, but not full blast. Not full <laughs> right. blast. And this was a, this was in the blasting hut where this happened, or is this was out in the woods. No, he he drew Lost Virginity out in the woods. Right, right. And this made me think about the first time I really got in there was at a youth gathering. It was 1999. Oh, okay. At uh, New Year's Eve. We'd all gathered at my youth uh, director's house. And it was a <laughs> boy-girl youth group, yeah. all-night, summer party thing. We had plenty of chaperones, whatever. Not enough. Not enough, though. <laughs> not I guarantee enough. you, not enough. Because at some point, they decided to watch The Stand. Okay. 
I've never seen this, Dan. Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> I was being fingered, so I didn't, I didn't get to see it. <laughs> that I remember we were on one of the couches a little further to the back of the room. And, like, had there been any light in this room or anyone had even, like, turned around and glanced in our direction, yeah. it would have been 100% obvious. So, like, I mean, everybody knew is what you're saying. That they were just being polite. I I don't think so. No one ever said anything to, to me about it. And if Brandon had noticed it, Brandon oh, okay. would have fucking said something about okay. it. So you had a, you had a close friend there who definitely would have yeah, mentioned yeah, it. Yeah, I had to several you. that would have would have said something. Cuz I would be the worst chaperone because I feel like if I were watching a movie and I was really into it and I just like out of the side of my eye like saw some kids finger blasting, I'd be like, I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be embarrassing for That's everybody. It's going to be embarrassing for everybody. <laughs> yeah. No, and you're right. <laughs> so maybe, I mean, the worst was over and I did it at another youth gathering, like outside, in the middle of everyone at a concert, but... You have a fetish. That was not... <laughs> that that was... I was That was being covert here. I was barely yeah. being covert in this situation yeah. because, like, man, I was... Like, you can't really, like, disguise jerking off under a blanket. And, like... No, it's my, It's really difficult. And I... Okay, I had really didn't know what I was doing. This is the first time like I was given 100% full access. Okay, like it was just field was wide open. Is for that me what to play she on. said? Like, is that how she put it? You have full, full access. Full access granted. <laughs> Usually, Dennis Nedry's down there. Bar- uh-uh. Barrier withdrawn. Yeah. Like there was no like like jeans kind of. Making oh, okay. It, you just you know, mean, like, a certain no way. physical barrier. Yeah, like okay. no physical barrier, and she was down just whatever. Uh-huh. It's fine. I'm just going to sit here. Whatever. So, I mean, and I did not really know what I was doing. Like, That's so your, in I mean, my mind, it was like, early days. all right, well, the penis, the fingers are probably supposed to act like a penis, right? right? You just jam them in there, in and out, like really fast. That's how that works, right? Yeah, I think everyone thinks that yeah, at so, first. <laughs> so that is absolutely like... Man, it was as if let's make it let's make another weird metaphor. Please. It was like if if there were if there were pure gold coins in the coin return in a tele um a payphone. Yeah. And like I you're just crawling desperately trying to get that coin out yeah. and you just can't come. Yeah. That's that's more what it was akin to. Okay. Cause Okay. I mean, I don't there might be the a, movie had to be loud enough because I I know there had to be sounds. Slurping sounds. Yeah, because yeah. it was I mean, and I was impressed with her, like her fortitude. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, she she never really had that done before, yeah, you know. Yeah. So she was sitting. There. So she did not know what it was supposed to be either. <laughs> yeah. This is a perfect scenario. <laughs> so she, her two kids are like, "This is it. <laughs> this is w- adulting." Yeah. <laughs> so she is just like, I mean, her eyes are kind of wide and her jaw is like set because she's trying to make any indication, any sound, anything, and she'll occasionally just do a. And but she is like staring at the screen. Yeah. I'm sure not even paying attention to what is on it. So yeah, that's a tough one for you because you don't know. It's you're like, not getting any signals. Is this, is this good thing or is she, this a bad if, thing? If it would have been bad, she probably would have like just grabbed my hand. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But she was like, it was fine. What? Whatever. And we talked about it afterward, and she enjoyed it. Yeah. So we, she we, was like, you know what? I really felt like. Your fingers uh, were, they were a penis. They were penising. So that strongly. was, that was good. Good, good penis. After my, after my hand felt like I'd been in the bathtub for too long, mm-hmm. and then I stopped and we went back to the kitchen to talk about, we had our powwow about what just happened. Okay. So and then you came back and that's round how two, we, or? that's how we ring in the new year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Round two, round three. Like yeah. that's all it was for the rest of the The Stan's a long movie, right? The Stan's a very long <laughs> yeah. movie. I, they, they so had this, to This know. carried over into like, it wasn't as easy with Austin Powers. Right. And but it was pretty easy because we you were Jerry both Seinfeld. laughing so hard. Yeah, we loved it. Jokes and yeah. jokes. <laughs> so that was that was my my true first full range finger blasting at a at a youth lock in. Bring bring in Y two K. That's good. I mean, in case the computers go down, you need someone to figure Be able out to lube up the parts. Yeah, figure out how to <laughs> repopulate. The computer parts have locked up. What are we gonna do? <laughs> We need a, we need a man with very spongy fingers. <laughs> we <laughs> we need we need a fourteen to fifteen year old with small, delicate, moist fingers. Quick, is there anybody here whose fingers look like brains? 
<laughs> White sticky brains. <laughs> I'm done. I'm sure Jacob cringed at that one, so I'm done. Oh, no, that was all. That was all innocent goose. I, I feel like I yield my time on the floor. <laughs> that was good. I can't. I I can't follow that man. I got a I got a lame non finger blasted story. <laughs> Um, I, uh, had another tire blowout. Here's a tire update. This is the third mm. one, like, in the past year. Oh, fuck, man. So, um, Nikki's really nice, and she works next door to a tire place. So, yesterday I had to put the donut on the car and struggle with it, and I felt like a man afterwards. Got the tire off, got mm-hmm. the donut on. Mm-hmm. It took an hour. It took an hour, uh, because I raised it. I raised it, jacked the car up, and I was like, oh, right, I haven't done this in a long time. I need to take the lug nuts off first. No, so so, if your car just falls over on you, it's fine. So, <laughs> no, 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 yeah. Just just pull on that just tire. Until, yeah. <laughs> so I had, to, I had to lower the jack and then take the lug nuts off, and then I raised it again, and then I realized, okay, there's a plate, there's a safety plate on the hubcap that I need to take off, mm-hmm. and, that, and the car needs to be on the ground to do that. So I lowered it, took the hubcap plate off, the safety plate off, raised it again and then um well I, I, I took the lug nuts off after i had to like kylo ren this thing like i had to kick and like i had to rage on the tire until the lug nuts came off because whoever put them on there um used superman to tighten mm-hmm. it with his mm-hmm. fingers so anyway long story short i got a fucking donut on there and i was really pissed off and went back to work covered in tire goo um, and Nikki was like, don't worry about it tomorrow. I'll take your car. I'll take it by the tire place. Everything will be fine. So we traded cars. So I was driving her car around and, um, I forgot what a clean car is like, <laughs> except for, cause I was like, this is really nice. Um, it's pretty clean except for these two bags of chips, just on the passenger seat, just two bags of chips, like not like fun size chips, just like the big <laughs> party sized <laughs> chips. Um, and I was like, well, that's odd. One of them's open though. So I'm just going to eat chips and drive around. <laughs> and that's what I did. I was eating chips, driving around. And I was thinking, I'm, man, I'm kind of, I feel kind of bad for Nikki because she's driving my car around, which um, <laughs> is just littered, <laughs> littered with trash. Uh, and then I was thinking, oh man, the guys who like, Ooh, they're going to have to get in my trunk to like put the, put the donut <laughs> back in and everything. That's going to be embarrassing. And it reminded me of the worst I've ever felt about my car. Uh, and this happened recently. This was probably in 2015. I went through um, the bank teller drive through and I, um, I pull up and I look through the window. I'm like, I don't know what it is about bank tellers other than the fact that they're usually like really young and they're dressed professionally. And it's like, mm-hmm. man, that is do that is working. That is you're, you're doing a good thing. Thank you. I'm glad that you're here and not the old lady. If Nicole didn't do that, yeah. it'd be like, you should do that. Yeah. It seems like something you you would enjoy. Nicole? Yeah. Well, she did she enjoy I mean, I, I think she, she was a teller it. for a short time. Yeah. She didn't really like you have to op, you know, you have to deal with people. So no one no yeah. one likes that. <laughs> well, I was um thoroughly embarrassed because the the young lady at the window, she kept like looking strangely at me, I thought. Uh, and the, like, and I noticed like every now and then, like she'd look and I'd be like, okay, she's looking behind me. So she's, I'm making a deposit and she's filling out the paperwork and I kind of just turn around and I realize, oh, right. I have a huge mountain, huge mountain of Coke cans, <laughs> just Coke zero cans. I mean, it's like, it's like I'm going to the recycling plant. <laughs> I was just thinking that Seinfeld episode. <laughs> yeah. That's what it looked like. And I was like, oh yeah, that's embarrassing. And that's the moment where I realize that I care enough about the image that I project to be ashamed of it, but not enough to actually do anything about it. So there's this gap. There's this gap. If that, time will heal the wound, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's this gap where it's just like, well, uh, I really got to care about something in order to make change happen. Uh, here's what I did when I got back to work, because this was on my lunch break. I got back to work. And I was like, I'm taking care of these cans. And I grabbed like four of them and I was like, there, that'll do it. <laughs> I threw it at the recycling cam. 
Just so about that's... anybody who tries to get in the passenger seat of my car, they all pause for just a second. Just like, where do where do my feet go? Where do? Because it's just it's energy drink cans, mm. coffee to go, coffee cups, these some fast food bags, or yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm we're just we're gross. In there. We're gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that yep. should be our New Year's resolution. Mm. Clean car. We already missed January 1st. Maybe next year. <laughs> All right. We'll catch you 2017, cars. <laughs> well, I know. Like, I used to, like, if I had to take my car to my dad's and I'd change my oil and stuff like that, I would clean it out because I knew he would yell at me for it. Yeah. But then I figured out if I can just take that scolding, he will then do it. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's how it goes. I wait for him to, yeah. have you changed your oil? Gosh, the it's going to lock up, and he'll come get it, and yeah. take it back, change the oil, and clean it out, just because he's so sick of how it looks. So so are you, like, taking lessons for, like, when Ken is 16? <laughs> You're going to yeah. be like, I'm not fucking changing your oil, <laughs> because I don't know how to, I'm, and... <laughs> I can, so I want to. <laughs> I, can, I learned how, see, changing oil, I learned how a few years ago. That's yeah. actually pretty easy. It Jacob is. taught me how to change a tire mm-hmm. uh, whenever I was a freshman in college. Whenever um, JD's tire blew out uh, in the um, like a parking lot, mm-hmm. and like she was like, I don't know what to do. Who can I call? Who might know how to? Jacob. So we went up there, and yeah, he was like, he was about how, how my dad would do it: grumble, grumble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It sucks. Go. It yeah. sucks. The yeah. whole thing sucks. And like the jack that's always in the car is shitty. And <laughs> yeah. I mean, like. Never in my life do I want, like, do I want a better car jack than when I'm actually using it. It's like when I'm in the store or whatever, and it's like, yeah, I'll just take the fifteen dollar one. It's fine, not a big deal. I mean, I'm gonna change like a tire, like how many times? Not very many, so it's fine. Uh, but when I'm out there fucking cranking it, like it's the most, uh, it's like the worst jack in the box in the world. It's it's not a good experience. I'm like I should have spent like the extra twenty five dollars. I think. Yeah. I wish if it wasn't so heavy, man. The ones that my dad has in his shop that just like three pumps, cars fucking up. Yeah, it's fine, that's nice. solid set. That's nice. Now I love busting my knuckles on the concrete <laughs> trying to get this motherfucker <laughs> off the ground. It's great. You can talk about ducktails. Yeah, we can talk about ducktails. Yeah. Ooh. D- <laughs> Dave, do you hear that? I do. Um, it sounds like now your fucking car. You know how to take care of stupid. Oil changer. Uh, the grumbling, grumbling dad. Yeah. Grumbling mechanical dad. Yeah. Mechanically applied father. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, that's. I thought it was. I thought it was the muffled sound of the stand in the background through um through a blanket. <laughs> Those do sound very similar. I don't know what it is about. Is it that generation that like they really care about what other people think, like. Cars have to be clean, yards have to be mowed. Like, there's a lot of chores that they still insist to be done. That basically, if you don't care what people think that much, it's not that big of a deal. I don't think it's a generational thing. Yeah. Like, I think there are plenty of people our generation who feel that way still too. Still like that. I, pro- I and I think I know more- very few dads that aren't like that. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. oh, that is true. Yeah, that is true. I think, but I do think the majority of our generation actually does give a shit about it. Like, mm-hmm. I think we're in the minority. Yeah, one percent, one percenters. <laughs> uh, there's something else. Uh, before I get into Dave reads from Wikipedia, I've got, I've got an I done goofed. Oh, all right. That I want to share, and it's interesting that you mentioned um, Drew Roland of Hops and Heroes, uh, because in the last episode, a week of Garfield, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I listed what I thought was all of the Garfield video games <laughs> that were released. Well. Uh, Garfield.wikipedia.com, which is where I read that list, uh, failed us. It led us astray, oh. Tyler, um, because they did not include a game called Garfield Cart. Garfield Cart <laughs> and uh, Drew Roland. Thank you very much for pointing out that we left that that left that off the list. Uh, to repay him, I asked that they talk about Garfield Cart on Hops and Heroes. So I'm looking forward <laughs> to hearing that episode. Uh, it is, it looks like a Mario Kart clone. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, single player what? only. <laughs> single, <laughs> single player only. Partial controller support on Steam. So and and you're John. You're not even Garfield. You're John. <laughs> you can be. He's a racer. <laughs> They got all they got all kinds of racers, man. Mm. So I am looking forward to the upcoming Hops and Heroes episode <laughs> where they talk about exclusively Godfather. nothing else. That's what their yes. podcast is about now. <laughs> Please put Earthbound on hold. I'm okay with that. And hurt Tyler I, deeply. I, no, I understand. To talk about I understand. Kart. <laughs> this sounds like it can't wait. I yeah right. <laughs> okay, guys, Ducktales video game, or as it's known in Japan. Wanpaku Daku Yume Boken, which literally translates to Naughty Duck's Dream Adventures, <laughs> <laughs> is an action platformer video game developed by Capcom and based on the Disney animated TV series Naughty Ducks. Uh, it was first released in North America. That's what it's called in Japan? <laughs> no, Naughty I, Ducks? I have, no, I have no idea. Uh, Naughty Ducks Dream Adventures, man. <laughs> I would love to watch the Japanese version of DuckTales. God. Like, I know it's just the same, but I want to read the subtitles yeah. for it. I mean, I don't understand if it was like Greedy Duck Dog Mauler. Okay. Right. That, that, makes, <laughs> that makes more that, sense. That fits. Naughty Ducks? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. think particularly naughty. I guess they're not being philanthropic, maybe. I don't know. The mischievous ducks, maybe. But yeah, Naughty Ducks? Louis? Okay. I don't know. Uh, The story involves Scrooge McDuck traveling around the globe, collecting treasure, and outwitting his rival, Flintheart Glomgold, whom I forgot about until Mm -hmm. I played this game. And I was like, oh, right. I forgot about him. Uh, He's trying to outwit him to become the world's richest duck. Produced by key personnel from the Mega Man series, DuckTales would go on to sell over a million copies worldwide on each system, becoming Capcom's best-selling title for both platforms. Uh, the game was praised for its tight control, unique and non-linear gameplay, and bright presentation, and is often regarded as one of the best titles for the NES, appearing on numerous best-of lists. DuckTales was followed by a sequel... Mm -hmm. which you informed me of. I did not know this game existed. DuckTales 2, Electric Boogaloo, in 1993. (laughs) Uh, A remastered version of DuckTales developed by WayForward Technologies, featuring high-resolution graphics, and most of the original voice cast from the show was released in 2013 for PC, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Wii U. So, that's it. That's DuckTales. Ooh. Do you agree with that assessment? Which part of it? That that they're naughty ducks? That they're naughty ducks. <laughs> that it is how much praise it gets. I do. Yeah? Yeah, I do. I'm a huge fan of this game, of the NES game. Mm-hmm. Um, this is going to get kind of weird, because I feel like we're going to have to... Let's get weird, man. We're going to have to break it into it's parts. Let's get fucking weird. You want to do? You wanna just talk about NES for a little bit? Yeah, whatever. All man. right. Okay. Uh, I love... And I still love DuckTales for the NES. I think it is it is a near perfect game for me. Hmm, okay. um, I, I still like Little Nemo better, um, but I think it's because like Duck. Okay, Little Nemo, DuckTales, Super Mario Brothers two. Like those were the three games that I knew I could beat, and that was important to me. Yeah. Um, and like I remember getting so much trouble staying up way late playing DuckTales. Yes, a girl go out with you. She says no. Pff, rolls off. I can beat Ducktales. That's fine. I, for, no big deal. No. I got Ducktales. Here. Yeah. I mean, don't need you. I'm eight. I don't even know what the hell's going on <laughs> with the girls anyway. So it's fine. I come home from playing outside. My mom's like, "Have you been playing in the sewer?" I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I love I love Ducktales for the NES. Okay. How, well, how do you feel about Ducktales? I completely miss it as a kid. Oh man, completely miss it. I had not played Ducktales until the two thousands, probably. Really? Mm-hmm. And I, it might even be as late as like, oh, it made me as late as twenty eleven. No shit. Like I feel like I feel like maybe whenever Wiley sent me a huge box of NES games, he mailed me from Florida. And when I popped that open, I believe it was in there, and that's the first time I'd played it. Oh, I love this game. So I was, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Because I was like, all right, I'm in these levels. Am I getting 
Okay, they're okay. Now there's gem. Okay, there's jewel. I'm, I'm supposed to get. Is it a point based? Okay. All right. Well, now I'm in because I like went to Transylvania first. Okay. And it's like I'm going all over the place. I have no idea what's going on, but I can I can pogo. Yeah. Okay. I think that was in the show, but <laughs> all right, I'm doing that. So, uh, the NES appreciation for the NES is beyond me. I missed it. Yeah. So so you did not enjoy it. Can't go back. Yeah. So I can have that copy then. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I'll I'll keep my copy of DuckTales two and three. It's fine. Three? I feel like I've seen a three. It might have been a reproduction cart, but Okay. Like the count kind that of comes in the black cartridge. Yeah. That's like in different languages. <laughs> the Karu Tail <laughs> yeah. three. Naughty Ducks three. <laughs> <laughs> but uh playing the remastered version. I genuinely enjoyed that. Yeah. I thought that was a that was a fun experience. Yeah, I think they did a good job on the remastered version. Because, man, Capcom on the NES, like, I mean, Capcom now. <sighs> they crushed it. But crushed Capcom on the, NES, on the NES, dude. Man, that's why I want to play Darkwing Duck for NES. Because yes. Capcom did it. Yeah, let's do it. I'm down. Yeah. Did Get did, to it before two dudes do. Gotta get to I, it. I know. <laughs> did Gizmo Duck appear in Darkwing Duck ever? I want to say so. I hope that he did. I um. We're going to have to go rewatch the series. I know. I know. Or, I, or Ryan Walters, Diddy, Diddy, let us know. Ryan Walters or Diddy Kong? Is that what you're asking? What? Ryan Walters is Diddy Kong? No, Ryan Walters, he let us know because he wore that dunk, that um, Dark Darkwing Duck, Duck, Duck shirt. Say Diddy <laughs> Kong? Darkwing Duck shirt. Gotcha. Um, I, I don't think we can watch all of DuckTales unless we do it illegally because I, I, mm-hmm. I think there are four volumes of DuckTales and I think only three are out. Oh. So. Mm, okay. Darkwing Duck, on the other hand, I don't know. I hope it comes in a collector's case with Mega Vault's face <laughs> as like a big plastic. You know how they do uh, it with the villain, Simpsons? Uh, yeah. <laughs> God, I hate that fucking I case. Know. <laughs> oh, man. That's still like, I think it is somewhere behind you in like my $5 cabinets where I just keep old tech. Like, it's somewhere back there. I yeah. fucking hated that case. It was such a bad Who's idea. It? Whose face was it? It's Homer. Yeah, it's Homer's face. But it's like, okay. after having these very nice, neat square all boxes. All match. Yeah, yeah. And, like, build off one another, and then they fucking throw <laughs> out this piece of shit. What season was it? Do you remember? <sighs> it was later on. Yeah. But, man. Were they like, do you? That, I think that's where I stopped buying those DVDs. <laughs> So I was like, I don't want these. I don't want to keep buying these. Yeah. No, I'm done. I never bought another Simpsons collection. Do you think they were making a statement of the quality of the show? They're like, okay, we realize this is the season where things <laughs> really started going to hell. So we're just gonna make we're just gonna make Homer's face. It's just, it's just that's we're gonna put it in Homer's face. We're gonna tape uh, CDs inside of a box fan. <laughs> yeah. That's the new that's the new case. Buy these. It's fine. You can't. No, no, no. They don't come off unless the fan's on. So it's very dangerous. <laughs> God, that fucking box. It's. I remember, like, I had all my nice, neat DVDs in college, and then, like, I've got this piece of shit. And his, it's like, it's not even flat. Like, it's his nose and stuff pokes out, so it, like, takes up, <laughs> and it has, like, the plastic <laughs> dust cover on it that doesn't uh-huh. even fit it. Uh-huh. God, and it, it opens, like, <laughs> it opens, like, the same sound and texture of, like, the old plastic Disney oh, VHS. Oh, but the white, like, cushioned yeah, insides. Yeah, it's know. like, oh, it was, Awful. Do, uh, does Disney still release like their Man, that's, their Blu-rays that's and shit? That's about the most white wine privileged first world <laughs> rant I've ever been on. It was a long one too. You were passionate. That was mud, man. <laughs> you were passionate. That was your Pearl Harbor. Yeah. <laughs> I get it, man. I do. Fuck it. I think I. <laughs> I I hid the case. I didn't want to throw the case away. I hid it away somewhere, and I just stacked the CDs on top of the DVD case. <laughs> so that was they'll be damaged. That's preferable to me. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> so let so we're gonna focus on the remastered version. Then I take mm-hmm. it. Well, I mean, you could talk about because I I can't comment that much about the NES version. Uh, I just remember being wowed by the music because okay. to see like what some people do on the NES, what other companies have done with their music, and just, like, there are so many games that have, like, five-second loops throughout the whole game. Yeah. Like, and, like, you think, like, okay, well, I guess it's they're just limiting what they can do with sound on the NES. Man, DuckTales fucking blows everyone else out of the water. It's like, you can still make 
this praised game and have great music. You're talking about the NES version. Talking about the NES version. Um, how did you feel about the music in the remastered version? Also good. Because, I mean, it's the same music. It's just covered. Yeah. I also, every bit, good. Yeah. I miss the the 8-bit tune. You know, that's just... Mm-hmm. But that's just my weird nostalgia thing, so... My uh, favorite song in DuckTales isn't the moon theme, which is... It's my second favorite. Mm-hmm. Everyone loves the moon theme. Because yeah. it's a great song. But my favorite song is the one where you're um, on the computer in Scrooge's office, and you're selecting what stage you want to go to. okay. It's like... <laughs> the reason I love it is it's because... It's like the Wii U store. It's sort of like... Yeah, it's soothing. Yeah. It's kind of calm. <laughs> and it's got this like really simple bass line that is just tranquil. Like, if that's... Like, that's what I want played at my funeral, Tyler. If okay. I die an untimely death, can you please make sure that... Or, that or a timely played. death. I'll right? <laughs> <laughs> I need a living will. <laughs> Can anyone out there hook me up? So I'll work with Henry. It'll be fine. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> no, Henry, he wanted this. He really did. No, we're just going to hook up the NES. We're just going to go to the stage select screen, and we're just going to blast it out of the, <laughs> the speakers. No, he wanted he wanted to have his wake in a pizza hut, Henry. He, did, he told me that. <laughs> he always loved the way Josh, God rest his soul, <laughs> the way he smelled when he came home from work. <laughs> I know I knew your father very well <laughs> for for going on 30 years before before he died. I, mean, <laughs> I know you're 12, but I know. <laughs> could be possible, man. No. Could no. be possible. Nah. 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 Will you will you carry on my my memory? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. You. Who will you replace me with on the show? Hmm. I would start a new show. Okay. A news show? A news, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's what I do. We would just rehash the Daily Show from the yeah. night before. It would be fine. <laughs> will, you, will, your new co- will your co-host for the new show be Jolie? The she, porn star? Hey, if she'll respond, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, until she does, I'm not including her in the show notes. Okay, that's nah, fair. just kidding. She'll, she'll be on there. <laughs> I watched her today. <laughs> <laughs> She's she's back in full rotation now. <laughs> did, did, did her not responding to you like spark something inside you? Yeah, like, I'll fucking show you. I can see you naked anytime I want. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna admire your body of work. <laughs> I'm gonna give you the best compliment you could probably get. <laughs> I what you let? Oh, man, I don't even. Ducktales remastered. Yep. Uh. What do you think of the visuals? Uh, I mean, of course, they were a lot better. Uh, it lacked a little bit for me, I guess, in terms of like, I guess I feel they're, they're going to do it. If they're going to go this far, why not go all the way? Yeah. As opposed to like, at some times, it kind of felt like I was watching summons from Final Fantasy Tactics. How do you mean? They just looked more like stills that would shift from oh. one thing to the other as opposed to like... The Naughty Ducks, you mean? Yeah, the Naughty okay. Ducks. Sometimes it seemed like fluid animation, and yeah. other times it just seems like like you're doing animation and forget like all the transition slides that, that go from an arm going to the bottom to the top. It just goes from bottom to top. Right. Uh, I... I didn't have a problem with the way the sprites looked. I thought that was kind of nice, because they look hand-drawn. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they were done digitally, but... I thought they looked good, and they look like they look like they do in the cartoon, and I thought that was cool. You're right with like the animation; they're not fully animated. Um, they do have like several poses that they'll do, and it, that gets kind of jerky. Um, but man, it took me a long time to get used to the backgrounds because the backgrounds are like two point five D, so they're like rendered, um, and it probably took like three stages for me to finally like get over that because I wish I wish that the backgrounds had been like hand painted or something instead because mm. nothing in the background really is important except for the new tutorial stage that they added at the beginning where they've got yeah. mallets and shit coming out and I, and i like that i appreciate like it feels a lot more streamlined than the nes version the nes version i was just kind of just doing guesswork because what as what i was doing or what i was supposed to do yeah but like they glued everything together very well for me like there was no, there was no confusion. There was not really any hand holding, but it was just, it was set up. 
It was set up like a Mega Man X game. It was just like it was very well put together. Kinda, not as smart as a Mega Man X yeah. game because they I mean, use words. Yeah, because so. there are yeah boxes where it's like you can use the pogo yeah. jump. The only the only thing, and this is a weird gripe because it's I guess it's just something that's always bothered me. I have a hard time reading Mark Twain because I don't like that he writes. Oh, exclusively about ducks. So much about <laughs> ducks. Duck Jim and all that. <laughs> <laughs> but that he writes phonetically the way people talk. And it's like wow. I'm trying to make sense of the words. Like, yeah. I hate reading Huckleberry Finn just, just because of that. I, I get that people like that, and that's the style of writing. It's his style. Yeah. But can't fucking stand it. So when Scrooge says like I can eh? yeah, and then uh-huh. Uncle Scrooge, Uncle Scrooge and like shit yeah. like that just kind of bugged me. Yeah, that's it's just that's just a weird personal thing. I get it. I know if I was if I was a game reviewer giving this a score, I wouldn't count against it for no. that. That would just be a personal gripe of mine. What did you think of the voice acting? It was it, perfect. I loved it. It was just like the cartoon. I fucking loved it. it was, yeah. and it was fully voice acted too. That's a big deal because like when um. Like when the minor characters would come out, I was expecting to just be reading dialogue, but they're they give minor characters yeah. voice actors too, and I thought that was lovely. I loved it. Um, I thought there were only three Beagle Boys though. Oh boy, man! Do I have <laughs> do I have a segment for you later? I got All a right. whole Beagle Boys thing lined up and ready to roll. Um, I love that the I love that the game is fully voice acted. However. My, this is my biggest complaint about the game. I love the remastered version, but there is a reason that I prefer the NES version over it. Okay. You've made some really, really good points. Like it is, it is more streamlined. It is easier, I think, for like someone new to come into the game and be like, okay, this is easier to digest because it doesn't. It looks modern, and I'm being, I'm given direction. Uh, you don't get that, like in the. NES game, it's very much in the style of an NES game where it's like, here's a game, figure it out, hope you enjoy it. Yeah. Um, the one thing I love about the NES game is it's it's more fluid. I felt like I was being interrupted constantly in the remastered version because I would uh, yeah. I would collect a treasure and then there would be a 20-second th- cutscene. And the cutscene is lovely. Mm-hmm. You know, the voice acting is great. I love how it looks. I mean, it, it's wonderful. But... A part of me was like, oh, let's just, I just want to play the game. I just, yeah. I want to play the game and let's get back to the platforming. And I don't, I don't just want to skip the entire cinematic. I'd like right. to feel press yeah. B and just rush through it and yeah. go on. So that was my only issue. Like, I felt like it was kind of staccato. Like mm-hmm. the, like the whole pacing of the game was, was weird because it had these breaks in it as like frequent breaks in it. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I love the remastered version. Yeah. I thought it was really cool. Because it's, I've seen it on Steam between two and five dollars. Well worth that. Definitely worth it. Yeah. Easily worth it. Hmm. It has achieved, I guess the new one, remastered has achievements. It does. So I didn't bother doing achievements. Yep. I didn't either. Um, you can swim in Scrooge's vault. They, that is, that's a new They added that's that. Nice. That was yeah. not on the, uh, the original version. Um, other than that, it's really similar to, I mean, it's pretty much a facelift of the NES version. Mm-hmm. They've changed some things, um, but there were many parts of the stages where it really it brought back memories because it was like perfectly redone. And I know that's some people gripe about that that there wasn't enough new stuff. But I don't no, want it's, it's remastered, yeah. not yeah. It's not Ducktales two, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which I never played. Ducktales two for the NES doesn't exist as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and also, it's a fortune. I think. Yeah. You have yeah. to. You have to actually own Scrooge's treasure to own to buy. That's true. Dugdale's too. Like what copies I've seen are always like, look what I found at a flea market for two dollars. Yeah. Yeah. That kind that of that shit. bullshit. So, yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, it happens. But what order did you play the stages? Uh, as in the order they were presented. I did too. That's interesting because I figured for sure that you would go in a, a different order. Mm-mm. No, it's showing your lawful side. Well, I was trying to go quickly, so I figured yeah. if there's a pacing element to it, and 
It's okay. I, I want to save the moon for last anyway. You don't have to I like make excuses. Song. I like it when you show your lawful <laughs> side. It's nice. It's very small. It's very small. <laughs> what did you think was the most difficult stage? Uh, probably the Himalayans, I guess. Yeah, that was just because you could just because they took away your pogo for the most part. Yeah, because of the snow. Yeah, you can't pogo in the snow, and I think that's cool. It's, yeah, no, I mean, I, it's like the same thing. I wish they'd uh, the thing about Ganon Ocarina of Time, just that taking away your sword, you know, taking away the element you've always depended on, suddenly mm-hmm. it's gone, and you're like, oh shit, yeah. okay, so. That'd probably be a bad one to start on, the Himalayas. <laughs> yeah, it would be. Because <laughs> uh, you wouldn't understand the, the game. Why like, can't I? I uh, all right. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> well, I guess I didn't care for Transylvania much either because I feel like I was backtracking a whole lot. And you make one wrong choice and you've got to go through a whole other segment again. And Yeah. Transylvania, I really benefited having played this as a kid. Because like I knew the order to do the mirrors in, mm-hmm. um, so it, Transylvania is a really really fast stage if you know where you're supposed to go. Oh, okay. If you don't, it's slow because yeah, you're yeah, backtracking, I did, I did you're wandering the mine around like five or six times. Oh, so. the mine carts! The mine carts are totally different in this game. Oh yeah. Yeah, because like in this game, they're more like Donkey Kong Country mine cart levels where the cart's going fast and you're jumping, grabbing gems and mm-hmm. stuff. In the NES version, the mine cart segments are like literally two seconds long. Like you'll hop in a mine cart and it'll go off a ledge and you have to jump out onto another ledge and jump in another one and it'll go like 20 pixels and then you have to jump off it again. <laughs> I mean, it's so, so short. But like in this game, they're extended. Uh, if, like... When I got on a cart, it felt like I was playing Donkey Kong Country. Because yeah. I wanted to finish it, so like I wasn't trying to get all like the money and stuff like that. So for a lot of those cart levels, all you have to do is duck. Yeah. Just duck and just watch yourself just go across, change carts, but just duck, and you're all the way across the finish. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I went for the gems. Yeah. Just yeah. I'm a gem getter. That's yeah. what people say. I've, about I've me. always said that about that you. guy. Is a gym. He's getter. a gym getter. See that guy with all the Coke Zero cans on the back of his car? Gym getter. See that guy with Jim Belushi in his passenger seat? <laughs> gym getter. See the guy with Duck Jim? Gym getter. <laughs> <laughs> even he's even got Duck Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I liked. Uh, I liked all the bosses. Yeah, I like the bosses too. They were weird for me because that's another thing that they changed in this game. Uh, and I think for the better, honestly, because mm-hmm. in the NES, um, the bosses weren't huge like they are in this game. And that really threw me off uh, because some of the bosses in the remastered version are enormous. Like when you're fighting uh, the appropriately named Dracula Duck, uh, <laughs> He makes himself very the, large. The final boss. Very large, yes. It, he looks like something, he reminds me, or like the animation where his face comes in looks like something more out of like Looney Tunes back in the day. Yeah. It's it's weird. Yeah. And I think it's because they created that whole cloth because that didn't, like that didn't exist in the NES version. Dracula Duck existed, but his only real move was throwing the bats at you yeah which he does in this game and you got a pogo off one bat and then hit him yeah but in in the remastered version he grows really big and he starts chomping the ground with his giant fangs and stuff like that that's completely new yeah uh which was cool because it's like oh here's a new little thing that makes the game a little more challenging yeah i can see like taking the bits that need a little bit of improvement and improving them but not changing and putting in new elements is the way it should have been done. So people complaining about there not being enough new stuff, that's silly. I thought that the Amazon level was probably the hardest for me. And it always oh, has yeah. been, um, which bugged me as a kid because even as a kid, I wanted to do them in the correct order. I wanted to go top to bottom. And Amazon is the first one. And I, I still have the hardest time with it. Like that is the one that gives me trouble. Mm. And I think it's just because of all the... Um, like there's these Donkey Kong Jr. sections where there's just columns of vines yeah, that you have to jump yeah. to, and that's tough because it's really unforgiving sometimes because there'll the, be a bottomless pit below that. Uh, yeah, sometimes. And the other ones like your frame of invincibility is, and your frames of invincibility are really long in the remastered version. So I <laughs> yeah. would just get hit and just run across that whole section if it was just spiky vines. And they're not that long in the NES version because um, I got. I finished the remastered version, and I was like, well, shit, I got a little time. I'm going to play some of the, the NES version. 
And it was crazy because it's like, it did not take me long. I was 15 minutes in and I was like, oh yeah, this is a lot harder. Like this is a <laughs> lot harder. Yeah. Uh, Cause your frames of invincibility are shorter. Um, it's, they do make a few sections easier in the remastered version. Um, the frames of frames of invincibility is huge though, because you're, I did the same exact thing in the remastered mm-hmm. version where it's like, Oh, I get hit. Well, fuck it. I'll just walk yeah, through can, two you can, enemies. You can go through whatever your yeah. obstacle was. Yeah. yeah. I forgot how difficult and frustrating the ghosts are in Transylvania on the NES. It didn't bother me so much mm-hmm. in the remastered because of those frames of invincibility. Yeah. I just get hit and be like, well, fuck it. I got a free ride at least for a, a quarter of the screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in the NES version, it's like I would get hit by a ghost, tr- try that same tactic, and then immediately get hit by another yeah, ghost. Yeah. <laughs> trying to think what else. Um, it's not very long. I guess it took me about two and a half hours, maybe. And it'd be even shorter without the cutscenes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I felt like there's, yeah, there's a lot of times you're just, uh, I mean, it's good, but uh, okay. All right. All I right. wouldn't want to sit through it a second time, honestly. Yeah. Like, if I were playing it again, I wish there were an option to just turn it off. You can hit start and then, then hit skip cutscene, mm-hmm. but I wish there were an option where it's just like, yeah, just skip them. Yeah. I'm with you. Skip all. Kind of but do. otherwise, like, no, it's, it's, it's a, it's, does what it was meant to do very well. And I wish, and I wish there were more things like it. Like Rescue Rangers? Yeah, 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 that's on my list. I would love for Rescue Rangers to be remastered. Rescue Rangers, I wouldn't mind seeing Rygar be remastered. Uh, some other things that were really good. I would love to see Little Nemo remastered. Yeah, I I'm would with love you. that. I heard that even the game was... Pid was supposed to be very similar to what people would have thought or reimagined. Like, I bought it, I haven't played it, yeah. but that's what I read about it. I would that's love why to... I bought it. I would love to see Little Nemo like remastered in like a Miyazaki style. I think that would be. Oh man, I would love yeah. it. Yeah, would love it. Yeah. Just look at my NES library. Is there anything over there? I'm like, yeah, I need to redo that. Mm. Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. I never played that. Oh no, it's it's one of the worst games ever. I remember you saying that it was oh, really man. bad. It's so bad. So it sounds like it needs to be remastered. Yeah, absolutely. And and what Dracula is also really bad. Bram Stoker's Dracula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's bad. Beetlejuice it needs to be remastered. Oh yeah, <laughs> with all the original happy music and bug stomping. Do you remember? Did we talk about Beetlejuice for the Game Boy when we were talking about NES Beetlejuice? I don't remember because I remember playing that as a kid. I remember enjoying it. I don't I don't know if that means it's a good game. I'm sure that it's not. <laughs> but I remember enjoying I think it was modeled more after the cartoon show than the movie. That's better. I like that better. I you, love the cartoon. I love the cartoon too. I, when I actually saw the movie, it blew my fucking mind. <laughs> it's like, it's like, why aren't they like friends? Yeah. Where's Doomy? Where's what's going on? Oh, okay. Yeah. That's not something they should have made a kid Saturday morning cartoon out of, but okay. I saw the movie before the cartoon. Yeah. Which shows that my parents did not give a fuck what I watched. <laughs> well, my pa- I mean, my parents just didn't go to the movies. There was no, I just had zero <laughs> access to it. So I probably could have gotten away with it. Yeah. But you had to get that HBO dog. Because my, <laughs> my, my aunt didn't care whatever. She would, whenever she would babysit me, we could go to Movie Hut and she didn't yeah. care what I got. So I remember, like, she let me rent two movies one time, and this was after we walked out of Forrest Gump. She let me immediately go and rent and watch Forrest Gump and that movie uh, about the boxers or whatever, the guy who fights 13 consecutive fights. Auntie, what happened to Forrest Gump when he touched Jenny on the chest? (laughs) In the bed? (laughs) Remember? He did it. He, like, cringed. What was that all about? (laughs) (laughs) My parents were pretty mad when they got there and saw that I'd... (laughs) I had watched all of it. <laughs> Wait, I can't remember what was offensive about Forrest Gump for them. Lieutenant Dan saying G. Oh, so right, much. right, 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 yeah. right, right. That my is. parents still, like, my mom, we just talked the other day. She's like, I just can't watch a movie with that, like, with that much language in it. I just can't do it. I was like, well, fuck, mom. <laughs> well, God damn it, mom. <laughs> I've never said fucking for my mom. I try yeah. to push everything else what would happen if you said god damn it in front of your mom oh that would be i've never said i've never said that <laughs> anyway that's that i don't know i have a weird thing that's you've the, like, never said I that don't, yeah you've i don't never say said that. it you know how i talk on this show but for some reason yeah i don't say that so tadpog first maybe we can get that out of you one day probably not if i make 
<laughs> it's like Star Wars. I've been it this far. Why go no, back? So it's part, this is part of your personality. Yeah. Now refusing to watch Star Wars and refusing to and say, say GD. It. Yeah. <laughs> Well, saying GD is the same. I, I mean, agree. It's, the it's same funny. Thing. I think it, there are times where it's the funniest curse yeah. word if you drop it at the right time. Yeah. And <laughs> during sex, it's fucking hot. <laughs> but but I can't make myself say it. <laughs> well, this friendship pack just might not work out. <laughs> if you refuse to say it during sex, <laughs> I might need to redo- renegotiate. You won't know what I'm saying with your dick in my mouth anyway. <laughs> you, don't know. you won't know. Did you say mod flannel? Right, I'm yeah. trying to think. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> <laughs> oh man Tyler yes Dave who is your favorite DuckTales character and why is it Gizmo Duck uh it was pff, fucking now you said it so it left me um Gizmo Duck the Duck Jim the superhero the um blathering blather sky Gizmo Duck is that Gizmo? Yeah. Like, Gizmo's the inventor. Gyro's the inventor. Oh, then yes, Gizmo Duck. Absolutely, 100%. No. Of course it is. Yeah. It has to be. Yeah. No, who, no doubt. I mean, who is, who, who is, everyone loves Gizmo Duck. Yeah. He's everyone's favorite character. Yeah. has to be. Except for Darkwing Duck, probably. They probably have a rivalry, I'm willing to bet. I feel like, I feel like there was that crossover. There has to it. There I feel had, like it was. had to have happened. So, yeah. Who would win in a fight, Gizmo Duck or Darkwing Duck? Darkwing Duck. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, no I, way. I think Gizmo Duck, Darkwing Duck is, it's like Batman versus Superman. And I think I would give it to Batman just because I think Batman is smarter and would know how to handle the situation better. Just like I think, I mean, Gizmo Duck is way more powerful and has way more shit than Darkwing Duck, but he's he's kind of an idiot. He sort of yeah. Jar Jar Binks his way out of situations as it's, opposed to Darkwing Duck, who I feel could... I mean, you do have a point. Lay traps and beat him. You do have a point. And sometimes Gizmo Duck is actually, I think his name is Fenton. Yep. I think it's sometimes it's Fenton's mom. Sometimes <laughs> she's Gizmo Duck. I forgot about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, if all it is is the suit, right? I mean, that's all it is. He's he's not like Iron Man where it's like he has a powerful suit and yeah. he's also a brilliant genius. Yeah. That's redundant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I think Tony Stark on that one on a level, like I was reading like a critique of Tony Stark and it talking like that the Iron Man suit is by far like that is not his power. His power is his his intelligence and his ability to absorb information. Yeah. Cause what because in the movie and Avengers who is it? Like I think Bruce Banner is giving him shit. Like, when did you become a, a master of nuclear physics last night? You know, I don't think he's being facetious. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. So I think that's how smart Tony Stark is. I would Tony love... Tony Stark made this in a cave! <laughs> yeah, his origin, man. <laughs> I, I, think if, I think it's cool when it's revealed that... And I think I'm in the minority, but I think it's cool when it's revealed that superheroes, who we've just assumed were naturally superheroes, shrug, are actually mutants. And I love it when they had that crossover between... X Men and the rest of the Marvel Universe. Mm-hmm. Um, like I don't honestly. I I'm talking out of my ass here because I did not know until like eight years ago that Namor oh, was a mutant. I didn't know that. Okay. And then uh, I learned that, and I was like, oh, has he always been? Didn't look it up. So I don't know. Maybe he always was. I said I don't know. Just assumed like as a Atlantean. That's just yeah. That's just what they are. Like Superman. Just you know. Uh, an alien kryptonian yeah. and then that's just atlantean that's just that's, that's just how they are yeah. yeah uh but apparently he's a mutant so i think that's cool right. i like it when they do that where it's like because it for some reason mutants make more sense to me than um any other origin story <laughs> although the yeah you know, that always shouldn't like i remember the somebody talking about on ass science fiction how uh wolverine can regenerate so much without access to like food or any sort of mass to fuel regeneration. And there was some kind of a joke about because they say Cyclops, his eyes are actually portals to the punch universe. So someone made a thing about the meat universe that Wolverine is, <laughs> is tied into. And then talking about like Storm, like her, if she's using her own biofuel, like the amount she'd have to consume to throw one lightning bolt. Because <laughs> it's not always her conjuring lightning. Sometimes right, she's sometimes literally she's, throwing right, it out right. of her hands. So I don't know. 
I, don't, I feel like we need to get Tony to go get to the bottom of this. Tony and Jacob? <laughs> Together again. <Yeah. laughs> That's the buddy cop movie I want to see, Tony and Jacob. Because there's another, like, they, they also reference a Deadpool comic where Deadpool is, he's cooking and he cuts off the tip of his finger. And he's like, oh, shit. And he by the time he grabs it to throw it away, he's already regrown his fingertip again. So he throws the fingertip behind him when he comes back the next day. There he finds himself cooking that same meal again. Uh-huh. So then, like, it goes on and on and on about Deadpool filling the universe, and the you know all universe becomes Deadpool and uh-huh. blah blah blah. So yeah, because some powers just some powers make sense. I feel like some powers just in in no way, shape, or form can ever make sense. I love Deadpool when um, he could regenerate, but not to the level where he does now. Um, because there was a time where, um, death meant something for Deadpool. Yeah. And like, I know they like went with a, a direction with that and I, and that's, it's a fun direction that they went with him being unkillable and his relationship with death and all that. Mm-hmm. I love that. But I also really love the time where it was like, well, he just, I mean, he can definitely die. Um, and it just, I don't know, made him, I thought he was more interesting back then, honestly. Yeah. But that's just me being an, an old person no, I think you talking and, about how things were better in my day. Well, I think you and Wiley both, you like your, things need to matter. Yeah. Things need to have a, a dash of realism and some things should have a certain impact. I get it. Deadpool kind of has like the Howard Duck syndrome going on right now. Like he is Marvel's new Howard Duck. Like that is without question to yeah. me. Like he is the new Howard, Howard the Duck. Um, and when I was reading him in the early nineties, he was, uh, something different. Like he felt, it felt more real Mm -hmm. and it felt like things mattered. And it might be because I was 12 and things felt like they mattered. I'm sure older people reading it was like, ah, well, this is a jokey book, but he just, he's, I'm worried because he's being flanderized. Like I see that like Uh, clearly where it's just like, oh, he's, he's madcap goofy. And it's like, that is what. Every new volume of Deadpool, like they're just like Madcap Goofy, crank it up, crank it up, crank yeah. it up. So there's like not a whole lot. Because I'd never read a Deadpool comic, and I had his card when I was when I was younger, and like the card gave zero indication about. Yeah, like it just made him out to be just like an asshole mercenary who was similar to Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was an incredible fighter, and one of the biggest mysteries in the Marvel universe was what his face looked like. No one had seen the face of Deadpool. Yeah. So he used to be like, it's like um, him and Moon Knight. What do they look like? Yeah, like? he used to be like a akin to a a very dark Spider Man because mm. like his humor and where he is now is because he would quip like Spider Man, yeah. but his quips were always almost always dark uh, and involving pop culture, and then like that that is the hook that mm-hmm. that got. That pulled Deadpool like out of obscurity. It's Ned Flanders' Bible, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Started off being a mildly, somewhat religious man to what he is now. So Deadpool versus Gizmo Duck, who do you think uh, takes it? Well, Deadpool can't die, right? Well, Gizmo Duck, we don't know if he can die. But hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> it just turns out like Deadpool just puts on the suit. And that's just how it goes. You're right. That's exactly so, how it would happen. They switch costumes. You're, you're 100% correct. <laughs> so next Dragon Con, I will be going as Gizmo D- Deadpool. <laughs> Man, that's that really, really good. <laughs> that's really... I, I have, I've seen so many Deadpool incarnations. I have not seen that one. Yeah. So... I mean, I look forward to teaching you how to ride a unicycle. I was about to say, can you help me with the, can you help me with the single tire? I'm going to quit my job. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to quit the podcast, too, so you might want to get in touch with Jolie again, uh-huh. get her on here early, so that I can train my, start my rigorous unicycle we'll, we'll just, we'll just weld, we'll cut a hole out of the top, but we're going to weld two wheelbarrows together and take one wheel off, so you just got one, the one, the unicycle wheel, wheelbarrow. <laughs> With you sticking out the top, and then we'll just decorate it. It'll be, don't, high, it'll be fine. Don't wheelbarrows just have one wheel? But if we're rolling two together, there'll be two wheels. So we're just going to take one off. So why don't we just roll with the one? Because that looks silly. <laughs> <laughs> because- Gizmo Duck has a front and a back. <laughs> and we'll get like a bicycle helmet, and then yeah, I think the helmet. Oakleys, and you're set. I think the helmet would be the easiest part of this thing. I think everything below the waist is going to be more difficult. Teaching you basic accounting. I don't know. No, I can count some beans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have basic accounting. I don't, man. 
That's the only class I failed multiple times. Yeah. But I took it at Murray State, which the program is notoriously awful at Murray State. Really? Because it's extremely dated. And I heard... A, <laughs> like fucking abacus in there? It, it's like, like just right. their teaching methods and the rules and the things they go he, out. And they he gave me teach two it. goats. All right, so two goats. And I need to give him three bales of hay. Okay. I don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> I talked to my advisor about it. He was like, oh, you're not taking that at uh, the Paducah Community College? I was like, what? He's like, yeah, a lot of people will just drive to Paducah to take it because it's way easier than, wow. than here. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense because it was terrible. Tyler. Yes, Dave. I get a question for you. All right. I got a bunch of questions for you. Awesome. My first question is, who's your favorite Beagle Boy and why? <laughs> I'm personally kind of partial to, to, to Burger myself. The hungry one? Yeah, the hungry okay, one. That's, the, who I, that's who I was going to say. Yeah. So The inept, the inept uh, Beagle Boy. <laughs> They're all inept, but he is the most by far. Your um, ma? It's ma count? Ma counts. Okay. Is she your favorite? I don't know. All right. <laughs> Can I read you a list of all the Beagle Boys? Please. <laughs> Please. All right. So here, this is straight from Wikipedia. Uh, DuckTales Beagles. Tyler, there were many Beagles on DuckTales, but the most common seven consisted of <laughs> Big Time Beagle. He's in the game. Mm-hmm. Burger Beagle. He's also in the game. They also have their numbers. Bouncer Beagle. Baggy Beagle. Bank Job Beagle. <laughs> Rim job beagle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, bugle slash bebop beagle. <laughs> and baby face beagle. Those are the those are the most common seven. Mm-hmm. Other beagle boys consisted of megabyte beagle, bomber beagle, backwoods beagle, backwoods beagle, <laughs> binky beagle, and bacon beagle. All of those beagles have a little paragraph description. <laughs> Cameo beagles. <laughs> These do not have descriptions. Bullseye beagle, bulkhead beagle, butterball beagle, bombshell beagle, bankroll beagle, brainstorm beagle, buns beagle, boom boom beagle, similar to the beagle babe, bonsai beagle, beanball beagle, bifocal beagle, <laughs> bumpkin beagle. <laughs> Butter space ball beagle. (laughs) Bully beagle. Please correct me. You will know this. Okay. Bearnays beagle. Yeah. He is a richer version of burger. (laughs) (laughs) Bicep beagle, a richer version of bouncer. And Bonaparte beagle, a richer version of big time. (laughs) And then down below that. And large letters, Ma Beagle. No Pa Beagle. No Pa Beagle. Mm. Is that the Beagle you'd like to create? Because I was going to ask, I think that we should, I mean, I think that we should take the time to create a, a Beagle right now. I'd be, I'd be fine with like Grandma Beagle and it'd be like the Beagle v- version of Sophia Petrillo from Golden <laughs> Girls. Big ma- Big Ma Beagle? Big Ma Beagle. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, bacon beagle. What does bacon beagle do? Has sex with burger beagle. All right. <laughs> you, just, you lay him on top of any other beagle, yeah. and he's a little bit better. Yeah, a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> no one likes him though. <laughs> no, I mean, none of the other beagles like him. <laughs> Tyler. Yes, Dave. I've got some other questions for you. Mm. If you were to give this game a beard, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that sums up how you feel about it. Mm-hmm. What kind of beard would it be? So it would have to be a beard that has been brought back, was popular back in the day, and they've brought it back, and they've remastered it. So I would have to give it... I didn't think of these beforehand. This is off the top of my head. All right. So I'm going to have to give it Master Roshi's beard from Dragon Ball Z. (laughs) Okay. Why? Because they've now basically remastered and brought back Dragon Ball Super. And they've restarted okay. the series again. Threw GT out, and now this is the new one. And the animation is better, and it's I really, I really, really enjoy Dragon Ball Super. Okay. So not Glomgold's beard. No, no. Okay. He's not he's not my preferred Scotsman anyway. Uh-huh. So Scrooge McDuck is Scottish. 
Yes. But he's Mick Duck, not Mac Duck. You're getting a nomenclature, I don't know. Because isn't Mick, I think Mick is Irish, right? No idea. And I think Mac is Scottish. You'd think I, would sh- I should know, but I don't. Yeah. Everyone should know this, I feel <laughs> like. <laughs> I sh- I'm not confident in what I'm saying right now. As, as a, someone with Irish heritage who married a woman with Irish heritage yeah. and named our daughter an Irish name, I should know. <laughs> Well, clearly you don't. You shouldn't know because those <laughs> those aren't qualifiers for for what you've done. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's that confused me on this playthrough. I was like, okay, because Glomgold is very very Scottish. Yeah, like not the name, but like his character is very Scottish. And I was like, oh yeah, well Scrooge is Scottish too. And I was like, well, wait a minute, why isn't he Mac Duck? Shouldn't he be Mac Duck? I don't know. Tyler, yes, Dave. If you give this game. A pair of glasses mm-hmm. that sums up mm-hmm. how you feel about it. What kind of glasses would you give it? Ugh, I'm trying to think of a character and Samurai Jack that had glasses. Hmm, I can't think of one because Samurai Jack is coming back, and that makes me very, very excited. You and Rhythm Master Paul Korn as well, and and Josh Dance. Josh is probably crazier. Josh is crazier than I am about Samurai Jack. Well, period. Period. <laughs> I know one thing about Josh. He is crazier than you about Samurai Jack. <laughs> <laughs> he takes it to a 6.2 yeah, Samurai exactly. Jack. <laughs> almost. Almost. I mean, it still rounds size. down to a 6. Yeah. So not break the cannon, <laughs> but 6.2. <Yeah>. <laughs> Samurai Jack versus Gizmo Duck. Who wins? Ooh, see, they both got that pure heart thing going on. I think they fight for a little while and then call it a draw. And team they up. Don't, they don't want to hurt each other. The team, up team up to up fight with... Doomsday. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> mm. Some remastered glasses. Because I could also, I mean, I go back to the Dragon Ball Z well again, but I don't want to. Okay. Uh, the glasses of Dr. Light. Okay. Because ca- the Capcom angle? Sure. <laughs> it's not because I've tacked up Paul Kluhl's Mega Man 64 instruction book over and now they're on that on that wall and made me think, oh, okay, Mega Man's been redone several times. Okay. Did you put the tack through the book? No. Okay, good. I'm about to say, I don't think he's going to like that. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, I didn't. It is right beside the book, so it's just pitching it against the yeah. wall. Because I've seen, I've seen you do that. It's hard too, but the like Mario 3 is pretty thick. I had to get a hammer to push the push pin through And one. that, like, when I saw that, like, <laughs> my heart dropped and I had to be like, these aren't yours. These aren't yours. These aren't yours. He can do whatever he wants with these. <laughs> well, they're, they're all they're yeah, okay. You thought they were mine. Okay, yeah. Which they're not in great shape anyway. If they were like mint condition things, yeah. I, I would I would think twice about it. Yeah, I mean, I was telling myself yeah. these are these are not mine. Chill yeah. out. Tyler, <laughs> Tyler can put as many fucking holes in the shit he owns as he wants. <laughs> mm. Tyler. Yes, Dave. I got another question for you. Okay. I'm curious how much we can find this game for on Amazon. Specifically used. $15. $15. $15. You seem very confident. I feel like that's pretty, that's decently middling. Like, it's a popular game. It's probably not like exceptionally rare, exceptionally common, but very popular and, and applauded. So, yeah, $15. Okay. All right. Tyler. Actual retail value of DuckTales, Naughty Ducks, Adventures, <laughs> used on Amazon at the time of this recording is $15.95. Woo! You're very close. You're yeah. going to the showcase, I feel <laughs> yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good job. I'm very impressed. Yeah. So much that um, that's why I was kind of quizzing you. Like, did you look this? Did you look this up beforehand? Nope. Yeah. How much do you think this game is new, Tyler? There is a copy new on Amazon right now. How much do you think it is? $135. $135. Actual retail price of DuckTales for the Nintendo Entertainment System new on Amazon at the time of this recording is $799.99. Wow. (laughs) Okay. I've got one more thing that I want to do DuckTales related. Okay. Are you okay with this? Mm-hmm. Are we good on time? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So on a week of Garmfield 
Phil was on, Sandwich Pope Phil was on, and he introduced a segment. And I liked the segment. The segment was called YouTube Comments Presented by Phil's <laughs> Wife's Money. <laughs> so I have some YouTube comments, but they're not presented by Phil's Wife's Money. So I guess they're just presented by us. Okay. Just our gift to you. Yeah. <laughs> Happy January, everybody. <laughs> I have I have four here. Here's the first one, Tyler. YouTube comment, number one. So how would you guys do while the State of the Union was on? Looked at YouTube comments and DuckTales. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube comment number one. You know, my father has buyed a French DuckTales comic, and I discovered that Scrooge in French is Pixu, and Huey, Louie, Dewey were ri ri fee fee lulu. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad I had that information. There you go. Isn't that, but you learned more from that than the, the, the entire. Anything, anything the president's ever done in the history of America. (laughs) YouTube comment number two. Those musics are like holy Bible for me. (laughs) YouTube comment number three. Srooge's rubber feet thingy is white and ducktails one and two for Ness. What are those, by the way? What's he wearing on his feet? He wears things on his feet that aren't shoes. You know what I'm talking about? They got little buttons on them. They go over the tops of his... His webbed feet. Look yeah, up. look them up. I'm assumed they're like just like French cuffs to indicate he's rich. Those are on your wrists, though. I mean, maybe ducks can wear them on their feet. <laughs> That's duck law. They, they, got, they got that web feet, man. They got that that shit they use. <laughs> they evolved that shit to be all good, man. Yeah. Scrooge McDuck. Well, she's this person says Scrooge things on his feet. Did you find them? Just look at a photo, or look at an actual photograph, Tyler, of Scrooge and Duck, <laughs> and tell me what those are. Ankle warmers. That's right. They look like ankle warmers, right? <laughs> yep. Why Why does a multi-billionaire duck have ankle warmers? Man. Cold ankles? And he's pumping money into <laughs> figuring out how to cure his cold ankles, but it's the best solution he's got so far. Or maybe they're ankle braces. Like, he just has, he's an old man. He's got weak ankles. Like um, a Super Mario All Stars fame, Tim Bear has ridiculously, <laughs> ridiculously weak ankles. I've never played a sport with him where he didn't roll his ankle. And like we were all at Blake's house, uh, like hanging out and playing like a um, couple games. And one of them, what they asked his wife, like, if you could change one thing about your husband, what would it be? And she wrote it down. And then I told Blake, like, it's going to be weak ankles. And the time for her reveal, she's like, I just wish he didn't roll his ankle anytime he did anything. <laughs> did you talk to him about maybe a gizmo duck wheel? <laughs> get him, we need to get you mounted yeah, for one of those, man. Get him into a sweet unicycle. That way you can play basketball more than 10 minutes. It's going to be great. YouTube comment number four, Tyler. This one is specifically for you. I am sorry, gamers. I don't really care for this game. The music kicks ass, but there was never a tutorial or sign telling me how to use the cane. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there was never a sign telling you how to use the cane. I mean, I didn't have any problem figuring out how to use the cane, <laughs> so I feel like it was unnecessary. <laughs> but okay. Uh, do you want to take a call or two? Nah. Fuck okay. Em. Just fucking let them build up for all calls episode. <laughs> okay. Anything else you have want to add? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got something I want to add. Mm-hmm. Tyler, had you ever heard of WayForward before? They're the people who developed the DuckTales Remastered game. No. I hadn't either. I still hadn't heard of them until you said that. <laughs> I <laughs> thought, I was like, is that a were Baptist you, movement? Were you, like, were you not paying attention to Dave Reed's Wikipedia? I just glossed over that one. Yeah. I was ready for the, the meat of the article. <laughs> yeah. I, if I know something about Tyler... <laughs> You are waiting for the meat of the just always episodes. waiting for Dave's <laughs> Wait, meat. Just waiting for the meat. Um, they, WayForward Technologies, also, it's kind of weird looking at them because it's like, have you played Dev Game Story? Yeah. It's They're kind of like a Dev Game Story developer. And by that, I mean they're, they, it's like a fictional they company. They hackers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and make Japan, like their most successful one is a Japanese high school romance game. <laughs> They're like reading through the list of games they've made, which is enormous, is like, uh, okay, they made all these like 
Barbie and the Twelve Dancing Princesses, uh, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, uh, Sigma Star Saga, Justice League Heroes. It's just a weird mix. And then Double Dragon Neon, which is a game that I really okay, enjoyed. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was great. Um, the DuckTales Remastered, of course, which I also enjoyed. And they also did a game that I haven't played, but I really want to. I'm not sure if you played it or not. This is a, another quote unquote remaster, possibly could be considered. They did A Boy and His Blob for Wii. Uh, I've played about half an hour of that, and then my Wii stopped reading discs. So it wasn't because you hated it? Right. No, I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Man, well, I got so excited when I heard that that was coming out and then never bought it. <laughs> and then, like, never even thought about it again until. You don't I have read to. <laughs> Now that I shit, now that I have the Wii U, I should actually play it again because that'll read those discs. So, but man, the way you started out that that story, I was like, it's like the puppy mill of games. Like they just just crank them out in this horrible condition. But then, yeah, it looks like they they have some real fucking gems there. So, uh, like, it sounds like they have talent. They just have to take whatever job they get. Yeah, it does seem like they're picking up like a bunch of licensed games for probably just a paycheck. Yeah. Uh, they also did a game that I've never played, but you may have, because I know you're more familiar with the Mickey games than I am. Uh, Mickey's Ultimate Challenge. Nope. For Genesis, SNES, Game Boy, Game Gear, and Sega. Masters. I think I'm only one one game more familiar with the Mickey series than you okay. are. <laughs> well. And that's just because Meg insisted on getting it. So yeah. They did Contra 4 for the Nintendo DS. I never played it. Mm, I've only... Man... I played Contra a little bit on the Super Nintendo when we did it, and then um, Contra for NES. That was it. Like, mm-hmm. wasn't crazy about Contra. I liked Contra as a kid, but it kind of stopped there. Yeah, yeah, it kind of stopped there for me. Because I guess of of that generation, like it was clearly the best. Because there are some bad shooters. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, a, again, like Sunset I guess- Riders. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck all y'all. <laughs> oh, Zach. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> you are across oceans. You can do nothing. <laughs> Sunset Riders. I would say that to his face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when he gets in, I'll do it again. <laughs> yes. uh, but like sort of, that's the way like DuckTales, like you can do good music on the NES. Like Contra yeah. is like, you can do good shooting and platforming on the NES as opposed to like, just like, Man, Contra is by far the best because there is so much shit when it comes to shooting on yeah. the NES. Yeah. And the SNES for the most part. Yeah. But. You know, we didn't talk about DuckTales a lot, I feel like. Yeah. How about, like, how much time? I do don't you think? think we're really known for staying on topic. Yeah, but I think this one, like, really, really got off the rails. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. How, how, <laughs> how on or off topic were we? Let us know. Yeah, I'm curious too. Uh, Thanks for listening, everybody. You can find that show on iTunes, Stitcher, and still SoundCloud. So, yeah, we're going to pay that bill. <laughs> <laughs> so don't miss the next game. Uh, well, the next thing we're going to be doing on the docket, hopefully everything will work out, will be the interview of Sandwich Pope Phil Hawkins. So if that is not the next episode that you hear, it's his fault. Yep, 100% We're just letting his fault. you know up front. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, ah. I don't have this 50 cents, 50 cents to spend, can't so no, it. can't do it. And you ripped off my awesome uh, my awesome segment where you read YouTube comments. <laughs> Fuck you. That's supposed, to be, that's supposed to be for my wife's money. <laughs> uh, we still... iTunes. We've been, we've been steady at 130 for a while, so Reviews, it yeah. helps us out. Please go subs- find us on iTunes. Mm-hmm. Subscribe. Give the show a five-star rating. Write a review. And if there's a game you want us to play, I guess host you want on any certain episode or a combination of the two, or if you want to make a Patreon request, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. do it there. And so whatever you put on there, we promise we will get to it eventually. eventually. Don't worry, guys. Like Tyler said, we are going to be back. We're going to be hopefully talking to Phil. Um, and just, man, there's so many sex stories. Just so many. Tyler, you've got. I've seen the barrage of sex questions that you've got for Phil. Oh, it's so, ludicrous. I mean, it is. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I we're we're going to wow. know that man inside and out. Mainly inside, though. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to spend a lot of time inside yeah. Bill Hawkins on Sunday. <laughs> That's the name of the episode. A lot of, <laughs> a lot the, of time. The one where Tyler and Dave spend a lot of time inside Phil Hawkins. <laughs> <laughs> 
In the meantime, you can always find us on tadbog.com. Uh, that's where the show notes live. You can find us on Facebook. We're at facebook.com slash tadpog. Um, if you let us, that's where you can let us know how well we stayed on topic. <laughs> just let us just let us know how much. Here's what I want: Ducktales uh, and Dark Wind Duck crossovers. Yeah. <laughs> That had to have happened. That had to have happened. What Scrooge McDuck's feet thing are. Man, please. That is a good one. Please tell me what those things are. Are they ankle warmers? Do rich ducks wear ankle warmers? I don't understand it. I don't know what the deal is. Is it because he, like, is that their version of pants? And, like, peasants don't wear, peasant Peasants. ducks don't wear pants? You doing Louis Webby don't wear pants? (laughs) Yeah. Well, they're children. They, I mean... Children, children, ducks don't. Have you to don't develop gentilia <laughs> until far into adulthood. <laughs> uh, you can also find us on Twitter. We are at tadpog underscore podcast. It's cumbersome. I realize. Hey, thank you for retweeting us. We do appreciate it. Uh, that helps spread the word about the show, and uh, that's great because we want to expose ourselves to as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. You can call us if you want. And if you do, we'll play more calls, and I will stop worrying about not having enough calls. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, give us a call. Leave us a voicemail at 270-883-2555. Uh, you can also send a text if you would like, but I promise I will fuck it up when I read it back. We've got a Patreon. Mm-hmm. If you, Hey, did you enjoy this episode? Did you enjoy this episode where we talked about... Uh, finger blasting and we talked about Deadpool for like eight minutes probably uh, I know you did you made it you made it to this point <laughs> so I know I'm talking to the right person either you zoned out and you just zoned back <laughs> yeah. in or or you're dedicated did you take a nice hour 10 minute nap <laughs> and just just wake up because our our uh, structure changed uh, if so and you want to like to give us money uh, you can do that at patreon.com slash tadpog uh, thank you very much to everybody who's already donating there. It is awesome, and it is actively going to keep us on SoundCloud, which is a good feeling. Uh, and right. it's paid for our hosting mm-hmm. since we have started, and that is that is great. Eventually, it'll help us expand. Yeah. So I'm excited about the possibility of doing, of just broadening things that we do beyond just a podcast. Podcast yeah. is always home base, but yeah. doing more things. Yeah, I know you want to do get into YouTube and stuff. Mm-hmm. Be a YouTube star. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if there's anything you want to send us, mm-hmm. we, we've created a way for you to do that. An interdimensional, interdimensionary, interdimensional, please. I know, Donatello. That you can do that. <laughs> Uh, we call it Nicole. Nicole's just aching box. So that's what Phil calls it. Nicole's aching box. So please help us fill Nicole's box with food you want us to try, games you want us to play, art you want me to tack up on the walls of the annex. Uh-huh. Whatever. Just put all kinds of holes in them. All sorts of holes. I'm gonna <laughs> hole them up. So please send something to Tadbox to Tadbox Studios, care of Nicole Nance, P.O. Box three seven eight five, Paducah, Kentucky. Four two zero zero two. Patreon will also let us pay her back for part of that because <laughs> she was going to cancel it. Do her like, can we use that? Yeah, I guess. We yeah. offered to pay her. She's like, I'll get, I'll get the bill in like six months. We'll talk about it then. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. Oh, man, we probably should check with her how expensive that's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> she could just scam us completely. <laughs> yeah. All right, you owe us uh, two thousand dollars. Incredibly expensive. Oh, wow. Shit. <laughs> Man, I could have bought a Packard Bell in 1994 for that kind of money. <laughs> could have got a gateway and played jazz ball for that kind of money. Jesus. Uh, our theme song is Moves by Sycamore Drive. Link mm-hmm. to that track can be found in the show notes at typog.com. How do you want to close this one out? Uh, it's a tough one. Um, I just had a moment where I forgot what game we talked about. Duck, duck tales. Yeah. Naughty Ducks. Okay. <laughs> should, we, should we close it out as Naughty Ducks? Yeah. Before we do, I almost forgot something. Okay. Do you mind if I give a, a quick shout out? Mm, please. Um, Rhythm Master Paul Korn let me know that he is going to be at OhioCon. Like Ohio goes I am us. OhioCon. Uh, in the convention center in Columbus, Ohio, this weekend, selling his books Friday through Sunday. So if you're in the area... Uh, and you've enjoyed listening to Paul Korn on the show or just us talking about him and want to check out his books, uh, mm-hmm. that's where you can do it. They're good. You should check them out. 
Uh, we were on an episode of Loaded Cart Gaming. Yeah, we do need to give a shout out. They to said Paul they had a huge backlog, so I have no idea when we'll actually appear. But yeah. we did an episode. And it's gonna be it's gonna be out there eventually. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, I like doing it. It was fun. Um, so Naughty Ducks. So yeah, we should close it as Naughty Ducks. Okay. So until next time. Tropical Capricorn. That was good. I like you. Like really got it too. Like you did like a head motion and everything. No, it wasn't like that. It was like you really, you really captured the essence of Naughty Duck. <laughs>